Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And 2023 is gonna be a really hard year to be a digital journalist. Yeah, it's not looking good for us either, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, it's not looking good for anybody that is going to depend on advertising for a living. Things are not good. A lot of media outlets are laying off. Uh, MSNBC and NBC News are laying off double digits among its workforce of 3,500, right? Um, that's not a ton of people, but this is a pattern. There are more people being laid off. Uh, CNN has been gutted. And the big one today, uh, I have to give a hat tip to Kay, is that the Daily Beast is probably gonna get sold. And this is on top of BuzzFeed stock cratering, BuzzFeed's not doing well, Vice and Vox not doing well. And these companies own outlets like Kotaku and Polygon. And, you know, I think by the end of the year, we're going to have a very, very different media landscape because I think we're going to have one that's more sustainable because a lot of these these websites have been propped up artificially with venture capital and ridiculous ad rates. And frankly, I believe cheated numbers. I think a lot of them are cheating their numbers to screw over advertisers. But that's just my, my personal opinion. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, personal opinion. So let's let's talk about this. Uh, we'll, we'll see where things are going to be. And I think this is why you're going to see so many clickbaity, salty articles from journalists and why we talked before about them trying to reignite stuff like Gamergate because it gets clicks. Why are we talking about The Last Jedi five or six years after the fact? Because it gets clicks. What are they being told by their bosses? Bring hits or you're gone. You know, it doesn't matter how you do it. Just you got to bring eyeballs to the website. So let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views. And Rance has over 287,000 subs. Woo! Thank you so much for the support. I uh, greatly appreciate it. Make sure you're still subscribed. Again, YouTube messing with the analytics at the beginning of the month. Yes, we know. You said. I know I've said, but this might be somebody's first video. So please subscribe. All right. Um, so this is coming from the New York Times. The New York Times. Uh, they're exploring the sale of the Daily Beast. They said the company uh, has hired Whisper Advisors, an advisory firm, to find potential buyers for the publication. So this isn't just like we're thinking about it. This is like we went out and hired a firm to find a buyer to unload right. this garbage website. And the Daily Beast has done multiple, multiple hit pieces on fans. Well, I'm looking here at the at the the, uh, the the line under the picture. The Daily Beast hasn't achieved the financial success of some of Barry Diller's other digital investments. I can't imagine yeah, why it has no it. Yeah. So um, yeah, he's been running this for 14 years. 14 years as the owner of the internet muckraker. Oh, muckraker. they're calling it. Um, so the holding company founded by Mr. Diller that owns digital properties, including people, better homes and gardens and Southern living. That's not really a good match for the, the Daily mm -hmm. Beast. Has hired an advisory firm to explore the sale of the Daily Beast, according to two people with knowledge of the decision. Sale process is in the early stages. People said that may not result in a deal. You have to find someone who was willing to pay for it first. Hey, look how long it took to sell... Gizmodo. Uh -huh, that's what I'm thinking. And that would include uh, Kotaku and all the other and Gawker sites. it's much sites. worse now. I mean, that was back when people were buying those and listening to those, and now it's going to be worse. Yeah. Uh, the price that that might command in a sale is not clear. Usually just my rule of thumb for a website is three years of the expected ad revenue. So if it sells for like $100 million, then that means that they think it's going to make $33 million a year for some reason. Um, so the Beast has had journalistic successes, churning out scoops on the media industry and political and national security issues over the years. Yeah, and political and national security issues, you know, basically, they, they when they can ride the whole, you know, alt-right bullshit, Trumpy you, Trump Trump. All, okay, so all these websites, these include pop culture blogs, all of these websites that have ridden the Trump train, well, the Trump train is pulling into the station. It's, it's over. That, that's what they were banking on. They had all kinds of venture capital. They had great ad rates for years. And I firmly believe a lot of these websites were faking their numbers to get uh, advertisers, especially direct buys, to get them to jump into the boat and be like, oh, yeah, we got so much engagement. We, we've gone through. We did that other video on Kotaku. And we're like, hey, Kotaku's engagement doesn't really mesh up with the number of views that they supposedly get. You know, um, it hasn't ch achieved the financial success of some of the other investments because nobody wants to read the shit. Site has been a small part of his empire operating independently. I saw that. Um, 
Like other, okay, here we go. Like other digital media companies, the Daily Beast has turned to digital subscriptions to expand its business in recent years. The company charges $4.99 a month for unlimited access while offering an advertising supported crossword puzzle. <laughs> okay. It also takes a cut of online sales for products it recommends. So like the So it's like an Amazon referral link. And that was like BuzzFeed. They're like, hey, we sell products. Yeah, sure. We have we have Yeah, that was their business plan. Amazon, Amazon. referral links. It may be an inopportune time to explore a sale. Uh, because because media stocks have fallen sharply over the last year amid a broader market swoon as skittish investors have grown wary of the advertising and video streaming businesses. The Daily Beast's aggressive reporting has made it an occasional target of lawsuits, yeah. which, which could complicate a sale. In 2020, the former editorial director of Gawker sued the Daily Beast after the site published an article about Gawker's tumultuous relaunch. The Daily Beast has said its article was accurate and the lawsuit is still working its way through court. Uh, the Beast has a newsroom of fewer than 100 journalists, attracting a sizable audience. The site drew about 15 million visitors in November, according to Comscore, which is not really that accurate. And again, those numbers can be faked. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm not trying to assume it's the worst. It's not hard, it. especially it's if you really have money and you're trying to drive your numbers up for a sale. Oh my God, this is coming from the New York Times. The Daily Beast has also developed a reputation for narrative reporting. That's saying something coming from the New York Times. In 2020, the site published a popular yarn describing a years-long plot to defraud McDonald's by rigging the Monopoly game. Ben Affleck and Matt Damon's Pearl Street Films option for about a million dollars. Uh, was that the was that the McMillions? Is that what they did? The hell no. Um, so basically, this website is a piece of shit. It doesn't make money. It's not worth it. And he's going to try to sell it during a time when he knows he's not going to get much money for it. But something is better than nothing. Right. Well, there's everybody and their brother selling their site. Going to be selling their they site. They are. So, I mean, you know, maybe he's trying to get in early. I think that's what's going on. I think there's going to be massive fire sales on these websites because I think it's going to come out that they're not worth it. Even if they get a bunch of viewers, for, you know, legit viewers, legit eyeballs, the ad revenue is not there. These sites are not worth it. And again, they're always playing with lawsuits. I still think Kotaku should be sued over, you know, defaming people associated with Hogwarts legacy, you know, but what are you going to do? Um, yeah. NBC news and NS, uh, MSNBC undergoing layoffs. I think we're going to see this. Well, wait, real quick. I want to go back up to this first paragraph update with information on reporters exiting. NBC News and MSNBC were undergoing a round of layoffs on Thursday, although the impact appeared to be less severe than the staff reductions at other media entities. That's, That's your spin. update? Your update is, yeah, they're laying a bunch of people off, but don't worry, it's not as bad as other people. So, yeah, other media outlets were making out like it was a lot worse than it actually was. But I think what happened was, that, you know, MSNBC, they probably went to them and said, oh, oh guys, don't say that because it's going to make us look weak. The thing is, is that I think this is the first volley, this is kind of like CNN. Like they laid some people off at first that were easy cuts. And then they went through and they started to whittle the newsroom down. Cause they said the layoffs come a day after reorganization of NBC news with a Noah Oppenheim departing as president and his duties split among three top execs. So I think that this is going to look a lot like CNN. I think they're like, the numbers are not there. They're probably not getting the ad revenue on the MSNBC website anymore like they were. And they're going to start laying a lot of people off. So why is the president leaving? I don't know. <laughs> getting out while you can, I guess. I, get, I don't know. Uh, they said another staffer laid off was investigative reporter Jesselyn Cook, who covered online harms. So website person probably but uh yeah they got back from vacation they said they're getting laid off maternity leave you're back from maternity leave oh my god um this is gonna happen guys we did a video a couple of days ago that a lot of employers were gonna lay people off but they were gonna wait until after the holidays were over they wanted to wait until after the holidays because they didn't want to be complete douchebags but the reality is, is these websites are not sustainable they never have been sustainable they were only sustainable when they're propped up with venture capital and uh, I believe padded views and inflated advertising revenue. And the only way that you actually can support a news site now with a full news staff is to charge for it. And they're not gonna, people aren't gonna pay for your shitty news. You know, they're not gonna pay for your shitty news. 
So we are gonna see a lot of this. I do believe that we're gonna see a lot of this in pop culture and gaming, especially because they are non-essentials. Mm -hmm. Like I think what's gonna happen is, you know, these companies will be like, fine, we're just gonna have one or two websites that cover all the news and we'll just roll video games or comics into entertainment news and call it a day. Well, I have to wonder where these websites are gonna end up then. I do too. I think they're either gonna get scrapped or consolidated. I mean, it's not a lot of money to spend to, spend to scrap something. It's a write-off. It's a write-down. Yeah, write down. I try to sell it. Oh. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I think everybody's gonna try to get out while they can. So anyway, if we had a lot more money, I would offer to buy some of them. I would. I don't know if some of them were worth it. Nah. All right, guys. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Yeah, bye.